Okay, so let's take some time to talk box cutters today. Let's start off with some box cutters that uh, I'm, I'm making this video on box cutters simply because I break down a lot of boxes daily. So this is quite a deal to me. Okay, box cutters. Uh, these are not really box cutters, but I use them as box cutters and uh, mostly for flashlight work where I shave aluminum and copper. But they're pretty nice. Uh, 8CR 13 MOV, not the best deal, but not bad either. Um, pretty decent Chinese steel. This thing is like, I don't know, 35, 40 bucks. Very lightweight. Uh, Kershaw 40, 37. All right. If I need something bigger, I would go with this Tucson. I don't remember the model number, but it's also 30 to 40 bucks. D2 steel. Decent. Just got to take care of it or it'll rest on you. All right. The blade is very long, so, uh, not ideal for, uh, breaking into boxes, but to break down boxes. All right. Uh, obviously these are not box cutters, but I use them as such. All right. I recently got this knife as a gift and, uh, yeah, I'm going to employ this as a box breakdown knife also, but it's kind of nice, uh, kind of a nice knife. Uh, I think the gray version that I have here is like $37. You can get these for $25 if you go for the green one that's on sale everywhere. So green version, $25, you have an excellent knife. It's on the heavier side for sure like four and a half ounce or something but uh i don't think you can get a better knife period for 25 dollars. i think this is the ontario model one all right there the model two is the smaller one but this is the one i would have uh, very nice knife definitely too nice for 25 bucks just a tad bit heavy all right so i'm going to employ this uh, with box cutting duty and see how it goes all right let's get to oh one more knife i wanted to show you this has nothing to do with a box cutter, but this is one of my favorite knives of all time. And I have had some expensive knives, but this is one of my most favorite all time. Tucson uh, 160, Model 162, I think, S90V steel. Very lightweight, huge blade, and it has a beautiful blade shape. Um, this is kind of my carry knife, kind of my tactical knife. Love this thing. All right. It's a, right about 120 bucks, but I think is I like it more than $400 to Ben's size. All right. Very nice knife. All right. Just wanted to show it off. All right. Has nothing to do with box cutters. All right. Let's get into box cutters here. Okay. Outdoors Edge Sidewinder. I'm not sure exactly. I guess Outdoors Edge is the brand. All right. Uh, very, very short blade, definitely uh, not my cup of tea. It's a little heavy with the middle slap here. Um, at least it's auto lock and auto uh, and one quick release, all right? Uh, flat head, Phillip head, not very useful for me, a little heavy. I don't know, I think it's all right. I don't, you can tell that it's kind of brand new looking because I don't really use it. And I guess the only thing it's good for is breaking down boxes and packages, but not really break them down if you really need a real big blade, all right? Uh, here, Valino Design. They come in different uh, graphic design here, machining here that are very nice. Uh, very expensive holder, $125 for this holder. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it's hard to recommend something that's $120, $125 box cutter handle, all right? But it's pretty nice. Um, very easy, quick blade change like that, okay? And there's two stops. The first stop is for a very short blade and then halfway, all right? $125. Uh, I'm more than, I think it's worth the money. The only issue is... Um, well, actually, I'm not sure if it's worth the money. I think it's a good knife, okay? And it's worth the, what they're asking for, but I'm cheap, so I think 125 is pretty outrageous for a box cutter. However, one of my biggest gripe with this knife is there are six trit slots here. They're drop-in. So you take a, this knife apart with these screws here, and then the slaps comes off, the side, the scale comes off, uh, or the frame comes off, and then you can put in, you can just slide in six, six uh, five millimeter trits. The only issue is the minute you clamp them down with the screws, they will crush the trits. I don't know if uh, Valino has fixed that issue or not, but my sample uh, has that issue. So uh, I just basically not put any trits in here. So that's all right. This is one of my favorite box cutter. I like it because it's kind of a folder and I love folder knives. Okay. It has a liner lock. So that's 
that's kind of a, uh, a uh, not a first. There is, well, I don't know if it's first or not, but there's definitely another option, a very expensive option. I don't remember the name of the maker, but it's like $150 for a liner lock uh, utility blade folder knife, all right? But this is the budget one, 25 bucks from Gerber. What's the model number on this thing? Uh, don't know, okay. But uh, it's pretty decent. It has this finger choil, kind of, so you can just put your hand up here and do very intricate work, and that's pretty cool. Uh, it has a lot of the blade available for work. I would say right about half. The blade must be changed with a flathead, but it is retained very strong, and there's relatively little play, okay? And I like that a lot. Nice, sturdy pocket clip. I even use this knife as a uh, uh, pocket knife, a carry uh, pocket knife. The only thing that I don't, that would be maybe perhaps a little better is uh, a flipper. Yeah, maybe that's asking for too much, all right? But it's nice the way it is. Uh, at first, I would open this knife with two hands, but now that I know the trick, I can just hold the blade right here and it'll just open with a flick of a wrist. I don't know if I can do that on camera or not, but we'll see. There you go. And it'll flip right open and then I can just uh, go about my way with one hand, all right? But there's something about it uh, that doesn't, uh, that needs modding. I guess I want to mod everything. So here's what I did to it. Here is a modified version. On top of the cosmetic changes that I made, you can see here that the blade now is fully, well, not fully, but like 90% exposed. All right. Uh, I greatly trimmed down the uh, blade holder here. It doesn't affect the function of the blade at all, actually. Because when you push on this blade, the most of the uh, weight on the blade uh, is force on the blade is pushed against the back of the frame here, and the blade will rotate about this screw, and it'll rotate counter, and it'll stay locked right there. It'll held in place right there. So there's really no play, okay? And the screw is kind of a design that makes it very uh, slow to uh, change for blade change, but on the other hand, it locks in a blade very tightly once you have that screw in. Uh, I greatly rounded off this edge, as you can see here, to make it a lot more comfortable. I rounded off the edge here also. So you can see that it's sharp here, and I rounded off the edges here. And uh, I basically rounded off almost all around the knife just a little bit. And so it feels really comfortable now. And now the knife stays locked well. Um, well, it it doesn't stay locked well now. It, is, it always stay locked well, okay? But now you have a pretty nice folder and a pretty decent blade to do different type of work and just not breaking down boxes, all right? So it's a little bit more than a box cutter now. For now, uh, now I think it's more like an EDC. So... I like it a lot more now, all right? So uh, as far as all these little ones ask that I'm concerned, this one is pretty nice. I wished it was a little lighter, but that is good enough, all right? All right, here's the real business stuff, all right? Seven ounce, D-Watt, relatively heavy in my opinion. Uh, slide out the blade. Knock this down with a rubber mallet to reduce the play, and it's a pretty nice knife. All right, slides in and out and lock automatically. Oh, crap. I just accidentally picked up this blade from the table. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, it automatically locks. So once this slides out, it stays, uh, well, relatively locked. Okay. And it's all right. Pretty, a pretty budget knife. All right, but it works well pretty budget build I guess but it's not a budget brand all right so this clip comes out this pocket clip comes out and then you can slide this thing out and then change the blade relatively easy and then you would slide this thing back in here and that's that I'm not sure how this pocket clip would work I have never used it because I think that it might just come right out of your pocket I don't know so I don't really use that as a pocket clip but it you can if you want and it's decent, seven ounce, it's all right. So I've decided I wanted to upgrade, all right? And I got this, Fat Max Extreme, all right? Incredibly featured, packed, 
but it's 11.4 ounce. Oh my God, this thing is heavy and the balance on this is total crap, all right? The blade, fully extended, is a lot shorter than the handle. And the reason being so is because this knife is just, this knife is just way over design. Um, stainless steel on the main frame and then cast metal on the rear around portion here. The reason that it's so heavy is because it holds four extra blade, okay? Spare blades. Ugh, I'm not, yeah, that's kind of a nice feature. And I guess this is kind of a nice knife if this rear box section here, uh, the box holder, the spare blade box holder section here is made out of a high quality plastic to greatly reduce down the blade and I think that would be nice. One of the cool feature of this knife is this blade stop right here. You can see that? Blade stop, blade stabilizer, whatever you wanna call it. So if I slide out the blade, it has the same sliding uh, easily, um, spring tension here, spring loaded slider here where you can slide back and forth relatively easy, but the minute you let go of that slider, the blade stays locked, okay? So it has the same thing as the d watch so that's pretty cool. But on top of that, it also has this you can see how that um, blade stop is squishing the blade. And now you have a pretty damn fixed blade, as fixed as this can be. And that's pretty cool, all right? All the way out, lock it. And now you have a pretty damn sturdy blade, all right? So that's kind of cool. And on top of that, you can also slide this all the way out to prevent the blade from sliding out. So. That's kind of a lockout feature. All right, so uh, pretty nice. I would never buy another one just because it's too heavy for my tool bag and too heavy, too heavy period. And especially heavy when I'm only using a portion of the blade and I'm up here, up that way to do intricate work. There's just way too much uh, weight in the back and it just creates an unpleasant torque around the wrist. And it's just really weird, all right? Not a fan. This one is a lot better for intricate work just because there's a lot less weight uh, in the rear, okay? But it's all right, all right. Okay, so uh, damn featured pack. Definitely not an EDC tool bag knife, in my opinion. It's all right if you keep it at home to break down lots of boxes, but I wouldn't recommend it. I'd rather go for the D-Watt. Okay, I just got this Ofa like, uh, I don't know, like a week ago maybe? week or two totally uh, dream everything i need in a 25 millimeter blade okay box cutter slides in and out smoothly without any lock so if you want to lock you actually have to turn this knob and then it'll stay locked yes i did rubber mallet the two tip here to hold down the blade even more so it kind of makes that rub on the blade but it once you tighten this down man this thing is fixed and that's really nice. I like that a lot. But the thing is, the cool thing is, it has enough tension. You can adjust the amount of tension that you don't have to fully tighten it so that you can just slide it in and out uh, relatively smoothly, relatively quickly, like so. And you can just use the knife and then slide it back in. All right? Don't have to fully lock it. And you can see here, there's a stop bar on the front, uh, at the end here. That stops this knob from sliding all the way out. But if you loosen it enough, it will slide past it. And then you can do your blade change. I love these Ofa Japan, Made in Japan blades too. Extremely good quality. All right. And then, let's see, put this back in. It, it has to come down low enough so that it will hit against that stop bar so that you won't, it won't slide off. Very, very simple, incredibly good plastic. Uh, I don't think it's any less durable than metal. Uh, well, obviously it is, but I mean, in, for any practicality, I think it's just as good as metal. Um, and it's lightweight, it's strong, enough, I don't know. What are you gonna do, crack this handle? I don't think so. I've dropped it a few times and it's fine. Obviously, you're gonna need to bang on it really hard to crack this plastic. So I don't really consider it a weak point. I just think that is overall very lightweight, serves its job, and check this out. Once you extend the blade fully, you can see that the blade length is not all that off from the handle length. But say something like this, you have a relatively short blade. See, the handle is not even in frame. And you have a 
relatively short blade versus how big and bulky the handle is. And to me, that's a big negative, all right? Simple, gets the job done, love this thing. And if you wanna lock out the blade from sliding in and out, obviously you can turn it down and it won't slide out. So it has a lockout feature too, all right? Very simple box cutter, love it. These two are really uh, all I need for box cutters. Wonderful knives, love them. All right, that'll be it. Ah, oh, that is not it, I lied. These utility blades for this knife and all the smaller box cutters that I showed earlier. Um, I haven't tried them all, so I'm not gonna claim that this is the best, but this is definitely better than the Stanley, okay? Uh, carbide edge. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it retains the, the edge. But I don't know, at least uh, I would make like two to three blade changes on these before I would on one of these. So I guess it pays for itself and it helps to have being having a flat head here where you where it's relatively difficult and you need a tool to change the blade. Uh, you would want a blade that doesn't wear out too fast. So in that sense, uh, the carbide is the way to go. All right. I would not buy another box of the Stanley. That's just my take. Pay a little more, get better quality. That's that. Okay. Night, night.